Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Betting Pros NFL Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Harris. With me is Matt Peralt. You can find us on Twitter at Dan Harris 80 and at Sports Talk Matt. Matt, how are you today? I'm good. I'm really good. It's, 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 it's energized. I'm excited to talk football today. Uh, this slate is not that pretty with COVID problems everywhere, but yeah, let's go. We're going to have to do a lot of dancing in this slate, but uh, let's get to it. Uh, a couple of things before we start. I'll remind everybody about uh, Discord. Come and talk with us. Talk with other people that are interested in sports betting, bettingpros.com slash chat. Matt, I don't know how many people are in there at this point. I mean, it was 657. Yeah, it's over 800. Know. At my oh. last look, it's over 800. But yeah. it's, at any given time, during a primetime game, you're going to find about 200 to 300 people actively in there right yeah. now. So it's pretty cool. Just come talk about sports betting, man. Whatever you guys want to talk about, any sport, anything that's going on, we've got channels for everything. Second, our prop bet cheat sheet, bettingpros.com slash props. It compares consensus projections to the available props in the market, and it gives you recommendations. It's pretty valuable if you like prop betting. All right. We're going to get to every game. 3-0, by the way. The 3 0 last week. Top three bets went 3 0. Top three bets. That's the thing. It's ranked in order of, of how good the projections are, essentially the delta. Sorry, man. I know you like the word. The delta between <laughs> the, our, you know, the consensus projections and the actual line. And so it gives you recommendations based on the strength, based on the difference in the projections and the actual line. All right. So we're going to get to this weekend. One thing, by the way, before we get to it, Matt and I were considering placing tonight's game. In the contest, because we are able to do that in the DraftKings contest. The spread was, what did I say, Matt? Five and a half at the time? Yes, correct. It was. I, it's now moved more in the direction of Green Bay. Or it's six and a half, I think, now. It's I don't know seven. what the is line. Seven, right. Yeah. And again, that's largely because of all the injuries. But in the end, Matt and I just decided... I don't know, man. Didn't feel right, right? I mean, it just... No, it, if I was going to bet it, I, I would actually would have flipped around. I would have bet San Fran plus seven. Yeah. So I yeah. changed a lot. I went and looked at just the metrics as, as to... Uh, what the defense has been looking like for Green Bay, and if they can run the ball at all on Thursday night, I, I think San Fran's live to win the game. So mm. it's going to be. I, 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 if I was going to bet it, and I didn't bet it, um, I, I do think Green Bay wins. Uh, I teased it down on the Daily Juice. You guys heard me. I did a teaser. I teased it down to minus one for Green Bay and then took the under. So I, I do think Green Bay wins the game, but I think they're going to have a real tough fight on their hands. Yeah, um, they are going to be able to run the ball because you can against Green Bay's defense, and they also have nobody to throw the ball to. Right. Because everybody is – I can't believe they didn't move this game, man. But that that's a whole – yeah, know, money, Thursday, I get it. Um, anyway, with the DraftKings contest, we're in a little bit of a rut. Okay, <laughs> second straight week, two and three. We're now 21 and 19 overall, 52.5% on the season. We're basically right in the middle of where, you know, the contestants are. We're literally 50th play, uh, 50% place. Uh, we did hit on the Braiders – uh, the Raiders getting two and a half from the Broncos, which is uh, from the uh, Browns, pardon me, which was a game that we both really liked coming into the week. And the Chiefs laying 19 and a half to the Jets, which we both kind of laughed at when we chose. Uh, but we lost on the Ravens laying three and a half to the Steelers, Packers laying six and a half to the Vikings, and the Saints laying three and a half to the Bears. They won by a field goal. So legitimately halfway point, 345th out of 689, legitimately the exact halfway point. People in the money right now are about 65%. So we really got to get on the horse. We got to get back going. Move past just three and two. Let's go four and one, five and oh. Let's really get going. So Matt, uh, it's a tricky week. As we said, we've got COVID concerns everywhere. Start us off with your best pick and then I'll give mine. All right. My favorite play of the week. And this number actually is moving. And I actually am going to get a better number to bet on it. But for the purposes of the contest, we're going to fade the team that I liked the best last week. The Chargers are at home against the Raiders, and they're laying one and a half points. The Chargers so far this year are 4-2-1 and one against the number. They had covered every game before, or, or sorry, they had covered four straight games before what happened in the end zone against Denver where they choked. Totally understand it. This is a team that can't finish. However, this is a classic letdown spot after a big road victory and a chance, in my opinion, For the Chargers to kind of get themselves going against a defense that is hard hitting, but they can be scored upon when you have nice weather. The reason why I love the Raiders against the Browns was because of the weather and the running attack. That's exactly what happened. Low scoring game, 16 to 6, right? The final score was a good win for the Raiders there. Bounce back spot for the Chargers at home after their tough loss to the Broncos. I like the Chargers laying one and a half the best this week. I cannot believe this is your favorite game. Yep. Like, I, I really can't. Number one, I thought you'd be on the other side. because public I know. is. It's such a public play. Everyone yeah. in the public's on the Raiders. Um, I, number two, 
the Chargers, like, essentially you need the Chargers to win this game, and the Chargers are just masters, even when they should win games, and giving away games. So I, I don't, I, I agree with you in the sort of, you know, sell high here on the Raiders with this game, but I'm having trouble, like, getting behind a Chargers team. Like, you know, your number one pick is to back a team essentially to win that legitimately the thing it does best is blow fourth quarter wins. Mm-hmm. You know, you're you're not worried here. No, I'm not worried because I don't think you can do it. I, I don't believe that Anthony Lynn and this team is going to consistently do that every single week. And it's been okay. crazy. At some point, this team is going to figure out how to, how to win games. And I think at home in a divisional game where right now in Vegas, it's a pick. Everyone's coming in here on the Raiders. It's a it's a okay. crazy big public play. I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna bet this thing when I get plus money in Vegas because I guarantee you it's gonna be plus one plus two at kickoff for the Chargers at home. So I'll have a home dog, but I do I think they win the game by three or more. All right, I'll put it on the maybe list because okay. it was it definitely wasn't a wasn't one that I was against. I I didn't have a good feel for it and I. Thought uh, you'd come in on the Raiders, and even if then I was like, I'm the I have like a bucket of games, Matt, that I'm gonna that I say <laughs> I'm gonna let Matt try to talk me into one of these games, and that was one of them. Kay. But I, I think you're crazy. But I don't. I I mean, it's I, I I'm not as much as I think you're crazy. I'm not taking it off the table because I I do think that at least when I analyze the game from a pure betting perspective, like what's the right approach to take in these games? It would be this. It would be sort of the buy low, sell high. So we'll put on the maybe. We'll put it on the maybe. I'm just, I'm writing it down. They so also are 0-3 as a favorite, by the way. So they're due to win a game here. Who, gonna, the, the Raiders are 0-3 No, the Chargers are 0-3 as favorites this season. And you like that, yes. you're saying. Because yes. they're due to win a game. All right. That, that, this is more love for the Chargers than I expected. Um, I My favorite pick, and I have a couple here, actually, that I, I like. I'm surprised this wasn't your number one pick because of how much you despise the Bills. And it was Seattle getting two and a half from the Bills. No, I'm with you. That's fine. It's on my list. Yeah. So, all right. So I'll probably put that one in. I mean, here's the deal. I I don't feel exactly the same way about the Bills that you do, but I definitely, especially lately, I I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some props, Matt. I because I, I in the beginning of the season I was teasing you way too much about the Bills, but jo- every time you see Josh Allen, he looks exactly now like he did last year. Like this is the exact same thing as last year. Now there are a couple of of you know worry spots in that. I think part of the issue has been that John Brown either has been inactive or has not been healthy, and I I think he's healthy now. I think he's good to go. I think with the three receivers, Beasley being the third and Diggs, that they are going to be able to move the ball. But if you're telling me that I'm I'm going to get uh, Seattle and Russell Wilson getting points with Jamal Adams back. I mean, I, I get that Chris Carson probably won't be active for this game, but I don't really think it matters. I, yeah, I think yeah, they'll I be able to pass as much as you want. So if you're giving me Seattle, it's actually what's interesting is that the consensus line right now, Matt, has moved to three. Yep. So that that's interesting to me. Is it yeah, what is I, it in the circa? Is it three uh, or two and a half? I think it's two and a half as well in okay. the circa. Um right. but if you look at just Seattle against the spread so far this year, they're five and two against the spread. They are one and two over the last three. Yeah. So you might say, well, you know, people are figuring them out, but I just think when you look at that Buffalo Bills defense, they're horrific. Yeah. And they can't stop the run or the pass. They're okay. I guess they're better against the run than they are against the pass. But I just think DK Metcalf is playing on just on a different level right now. Right. And I love the fact that the defense is getting healthy here. And I just think Josh Allen is good for one or two turnovers a game. And they should have yeah. lost to the Patriots. I mean, this yep. is both these teams should have lost to the Patriots. And the Patriots, <laughs> right. I mean, they should have lost, you know, last play of the game in Seattle, last play or second to last play of the game in Buffalo. And yep. both times the defense made plays. So, I, I mean, it's, it is funny to, to look at both these teams and go, OK, they are beatable both at yep. home and on the road. But I got Russ, better quarterback. I'm not a big fan of McDermott. I, 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 I like Pete Carroll enough. Better coach on Seattle side, better quarterback on Seattle side. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be close because every Seattle game is close. But, you know, Jamal Adams coming back here, I just I think they win this game. And without fans in Buffalo, it just it, that yeah. place doesn't scare me that much. So, all right, I'll write it in. Go ahead. What's your next one? OK, so how do you feel about a play that we don't know yet about what's happening with the quarterback spot with Detroit? OK, so you are you, are you, uh, are you, you like? Are, are you comfortable saying that Matthew Stafford is not going to play for the Detroit Lions? No, it's... actually, I think he is going to play. You do think he's going to play. So here's the deal. This is what I understand, Matt. You correct me if I'm wrong. Yep. Okay. He's been deemed a close contact. That's not correct. A, a positive test. If he's cleared by Sunday morning, 
if he doesn't have a positive test or whatever by Sunday morning, he can play, right? Yes, but he's not practicing. Okay. So he I, can't be around anybody. He is suspected I, to being positive for COVID-19. Uh, suspected. He doesn't have it confirmed test, but he's in close contact. So he's, te- he's being isolated. He's being pulled away. Okay. And his wife and his wife confirmed that they were in close contact with somebody who had, yep. po- who is positive for COVID. Okay. All right. So, but if he, if he does get, if he doesn't test positive before Sunday, he does get to play, right? I believe he does. Yes. Okay. So, but let's talk about it. This is Minnesota. Uh-huh. Link. By the way, I forgot. I meant to mention it before that 74% of the experts in our bed analyzer are favoring Seattle okay. uh, with, and now it's a three point spread. So it's a little bit better, but either way, I do think that game. Okay. So this is Minnesota length three and a half, right? Yep. To the mm-hmm. Lions in Minnesota. Go ahead. Talk me through it then. So this is only for you if Matthew Stafford doesn't play. It's not only. I could still pick the Vikings even without them, but I, I feel even better. As, the reason why it's my number two play is mm-hmm. because of the fact that I look at that and I say, okay, I believe Matthew Stafford, if nothing less, he hasn't been practicing, and these teams are very distracted. You're on the road, so you're very careful and cautious because if he's testing negative and he can't be around his teammates because he might be positive, and like, when does he travel? How does he travel? There's just so many things go into this when it's your starting quarterback who can't have meetings besides Zoom meetings to, yep. get, ready, to get ready for a football game, and the Vikings have their backs are against the wall, but they're 4-3 and three against the spread this year, all right? It's a game that the Vikings have to have. They are fighting for their lives. They showed up. They ran the ball. Dalvin Cook looks great. Mm-hmm. I just think the I think the Vikings might be on a heater here and a, and a chance at home to get a W. And then if Stafford doesn't play, I love this pick. Okay, can you name me a healthy member of the Vikings secondary? No, because there isn't one. I mean, I mean, it's it's absolutely they, they have, but but we have, we have to see about COVID. They have two guys on the COVID list, so they could come back by the time they play. So we'll see what happens with COVID-19 and the Vikings. But, I mean, I, I just think this is, to me, starting quarterbacks in the NFL when they have trouble or problems, I don't know. I mean, I think this is a chance for Dalvin Cook to run the football here and, and to keep going hot. Not the same way he was against the Packers, but I think this is a chance for this Vikings team. Look, the coaching staff might be coaching for their jobs. They can't uh-huh. go out and lose, you know, win two, three games this year. So... But you know they don't. Easy. They can win, but not cover if it's more. You know, it's more true. Field Three ball. and a half. Is, I, 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 I get the hook, but that's where that's where the Stafford comes in. So okay, all right. So and there is no Kenny Galladay in this right. game. So that that's a big deal. I mean, if you've watched Marvin Jones play, I'm sure he'll score two touchdowns just because that's you know what Marvin Jones does whenever you're kind of like I'm done with Marvin Jones. And T.J. Hawkinson is legit, and I, I do like DeAndre Swift. I, I, I'm not fully opposed to it. It was in my bucket of, I'm going to let Matt talk to me. And to the extent I lean one way or the other, it was the Vikings and the spread's moving. It's four and a half right now in favor of the Vikings and on our bet analyzer, 58% like the Vikings, even at that number. So I'm going to put that in the maybe, I think I might like that one better than the Chargers okay. laying one and a half to the Raiders, but I'm not opposed to it. I'm not opposed to it, especially if Stafford doesn't play. Now, do you, are we going to know? I mean, uh, obviously, if he tests positive before Sunday morning, well, no, I wonder, you know, Matt, I can wait to put these in right. until Sunday at 10. So it can legitimately be one where. Well, no, I mean, ha- I mean, they have to need yeah. a starting quarterback. He's got to work out. He's got to be with the ones. I mean, if, right. if he's not playing, they're going to let yeah. everybody know by the time. Yeah. I mean, by Saturday, we'll know okay. if Stafford's playing. OK. All right. So let's put that one on the maybe list. Uh, OK. My next best pick is a team that really let us down last week. But it's also a team that I wanted to pick last week. That you were like, no, I hate this coaching staff. I don't like this team. So I'm wondering how you feel, even though they're on the road, Baltimore laying two and a half to the Colts. I'm on the other side. You like the Colts in this game. Yep. I thought you were, right. I, I thought you'd pick the Colts. No, no, no. You, I you, and, and, you were yeah. so high on the Colts. I that's my number three that's my third favorite play of the week. The, all right. Well, let's talk it through then. Ta- tell why are you high on the Colts? And then I'll give my side. All right. So I'm high on the Colts because they're at home catching points. Yep. Okay. So they, they got two and a half points here. Mm-hmm. And I think there's something really wrong with Baltimore right now. I think there's something really wrong with the passing attack. I think teams have figured out Lamar Jackson. I, I, I think that they have the Ravens right now. They're not involving their wide receivers the same way that they have in the past. Yep. And I think you're relying. I think the team is looking at Lamar Jackson and asking him to be Superman. And if he's not Superman, they're losing. And. I just fundamentally think there's something wrong here, and I know Phillip Rivers is a real dangerous guy right now to pick, but their defense is playing well. Their offensive line played really well. I mean, look what they did last week. I just think they're a hot football team. I mean, Baltimore might win the game, but I'm getting two and a half points at home. I, I, 
I mean, so just... last week, last week was the Lions, right? I'm not misremembering. Yes. Right. Yeah. That, I mean, that was for me, I, th- this is what I said when we started talking about it, Matt. I said, I feel like I'm in like a, a parallel universe because this is like the easiest pick in the world to me. And nobody else was on it. It wasn't right. just you. I, everybody else was like, no, no, no. I didn't understand. It. The Lions are just not capable of winning a game against a team like the Colts with that defense. Here's my big question, I think, for the Colts. What? How are they going to move the ball? I mean, I know Marlon Humphrey is is going to be they out here. They got seven guys with COVID. Yeah, so seven. are they all out? Yes, they they're all out. They're, they're all, all out. They're all out. Humphreys is out. They're all out. They I know seven I'm out, but here the, the, the Colts. Uh, the, one of the reasons why I didn't I didn't go crazy over it. What the Colts don't have receivers. I mean, even if you buy a Ty Hilton bounce back, Ty Hilton's probably not playing in this game. Um, you know, so what are you looking at? Zach Pascal, maybe Michael Pittman Jr. comes back, but it's not really scary. They've got eight tight ends. They're not going to go with Jonathan Taylor, which maybe that's better for them I, with the way Taylor is running. Um, but, you know, Jordan Wilkins doesn't so scare just, me now. He might. Just, just, yeah. we, just people know, okay? LJ Fort, COVID. Deshaun Elliott, COVID. Ron Stanley, ankle injury. Patrick Queen, COVID. Matthew Judon is back, actually. He came back today. So they, mm-hmm. they, he's back off those. Malik Harrison, COVID. Uh, Tyus Bowser, uh, COVID. Marlon Humphreys, COVID. I mean, there are now, a lot now, of guys on that Humphrey's defense. Humphreys is the only guy who actually tested positive. Is that right? And the rest are close contacts? Or do you know if the rest have tested positive? Because that was my understanding. They're on the COVID list. So we never, right. when they get put on the COVID list, it's assumed that they cannot play, that they're going to have to have three negative tests. But Stafford's on the COVID list, right? Correct. Uh, is he on the COVID list? I think what happens is if you're a high contact, you, and I should know this at this point, but I'm very sorry. I've been up for like two oh, straight days. I'll, I'll, I'll you, look at it right now. Matthew yeah, Stafford look it up. Is, I, I believe, I believe. He is on the COVID the, list. He is, right? Yep. I believe if you are, if you have tested positive, or if you are deemed a close contact or whatever it is, a high risk, con- whatever yes. it is, that you're put on the COVID list, which is why Jamal Williams can't play in tonight's game. And it, which is why Brandon Ayuk can't play in tonight's game because they're deemed close contacts with uh, Kendrick Bourne. And, uh, you know, but here whoever, on a Thursday, if you place on the COVID list on Thursday, you have to test negative on Friday, Saturday and Sunday to play. Were these, were these guys put on? On the list on Thursday, though? They were put on the list earlier in the week, right? I thought it was today. They, were, I thought Stafford went on there today. I thought the, the, the I thought nope. all, all, all this COVID news broke today with the Ravens and, and with the Lions. No? It could have been yesterday. No, I, I think it was at least. It I was maybe. Wednesday at the early, at the latest. I mean, the, yeah. at the earliest, rather. So it was, but it really Stafford, was Wednesday. If Stafford, I don't think it was today, unless I'm unless I'm mixing up my day. So if Stafford can play, then, then these guys will. But uh, regardless, regardless, let's just say this. You probably don't like it even if they can play, right? I mean, you know Humphrey is out because Humphrey actually tested positive you don't like it regardless even if yeah they can I, play, right? I like the colts on this i'm on That's the Colts side it's, That's I'm, fine. I'm gonna bet this game i like the Colts. i, 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 I bet it as well so you and i will have some fun with it just me right. and you but we're not gonna put it in the contest <laughs> that's fine i think the ravens are gonna win this game just um, so you know i can read this straight off the internet here okay stafford is considered a high risk close contact of a non-team member who tested positive for COVID 19 stafford's last contact with the individual was monday which means he would be eligible to come off the reserve list sunday and mm-hmm. play against the Vikings pending five straight days of negative tests. Okay. Not three. And it's five. I thought it was three days. It's five straight yeah. days of, okay. ne- of negative tests. And do we have the, do you know the, it doesn't matter. We're not picking it anyway, but the Baltimore secondary when they sure. were put on. So for the Ravens, uh, the Ravens story for them with COVID. Um, I hope everybody really appreciates how much time we're trying to spend giving you well, no, decent this is, betting yeah, this, advice. This is, this is, this is important. Okay. So In a seven game that Ravens, we're not picking. Yeah. So seven ahead. Ravens are considered high, co- high contact, high risk after mm-hmm. Marlon Humphrey tested positive. Yep. I, I read the list already. This doesn't indicate that those close contacts have tested positive or will miss the game on Sunday. However, Humphreys will be out for sure. He'd be quarantined for 10 days. So, um, the league sent a memo to the team asking everyone to wear masks on the sidelines and during games. Um, in regards to positive tests with Ravens and Packers, the memo states additional players and staff members were designated as high risk close contacts as a result of unmasked social interactions outside of the facility. So who knows what the heck okay. is going to happen here? I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it could be complete chaos yeah. if they all test positive on Saturday morning and the whole defense could be decimated in this game. Like, this game could get moved. I mean, if, right. if it runs through the Ravens locker room, this game could be subject to being pushed back. Okay. All right. Well, either way, we're not taking it. But okay. if you are looking to bet it, even right now with what we know right now, I'm still taking it with right. Baltimore laying like under a field goal. So 
I'm I'm willing to do it. But go ahead to your next game if you like. Uh, if you like. Okay, else. so there's there's two other games we haven't got to, and they're both a little ugly, and and and, and I'm not gonna stand on a table and scream for either one. But yep. the ATM machine that's the KC Chiefs mm-hmm. against the Panthers. Yep. They're, they're at home. I I just think this is an opportunity. I know they've got COVID issues too. Chris Jones is on the COVID issue yeah. on the COVID list now, which is not great. I understand that, uh, but. It's the Chiefs against that defense for the Panthers. Yep. It's 10 and a half. I know it's a little steep, but it's the Chiefs. I mean, they, they just they beat up on everybody at home. Yeah, they cover the big spreads. I mean, yeah. that, that was really why you and I were like against the Jets. We're like, what is it? 19 and a half? That's fine. We're, we're fine with that. Um, I mean, they've covered so far this year. They've covered 11 once. They've covered uh, nine and a half, 11 and 20 of the big yeah. spreads and yeah. seven of the big spreads. Are you worried at all about? McCaffrey coming back in this no, game. No, because I think things. I actually agree with my pro football focus people. I think getting McCaffrey back into the offense is going to take time. Okay. Well, uh, let me say this. This was not one of the ones on my list, but it was the one that it, actually technically it did make the cut. Yeah. So it did make the cut. So I think we could probably just put that in I, okay. because it, I, I liked it too. I like it too. I think, you know, you saw against the Panthers. I get uh, the Panthers, the Falcons. I get that it was bad weather, but I, I think that this, this, you know, Carolina offense is now coming back down to earth a little yeah. bit and it's you know and the defense is not nearly as good as it has played and I think that they're just going to be able to uh move the ball pretty pretty well and put up a ton of points so I'm good with that let's just put that in Chiefs laying 10 and a half to the Panthers okay uh, okay all right let me get to my next one then because I have a couple still okay. a couple here now this one is in your dead zone so you can't possibly like it but the Bears do have offensive line issues with COVID, again, and injuries. I don't know who's even going to be on that offensive line right now. So I kind of like, in Tennessee, the Titans laying five and a half to the Bears in a bounce back spot. There's a couple of reasons that we can get to why you say, I don't like, you know, five and a half with, with favorites. Um, they're getting a little healthier in their secondary, which has been absolutely decimated. Dory Jackson, I think, is going to play in this game. They traded um, for... Uh, King, King, so, and um, I think Jenkins isn't going to play for the Bears as well. It's going to open up the run defense uh, a little more for the Titans to be able to run a lot here. So I think this is a real bounce back spot. And again, I, you know, I know we lost last week in a game that I felt like we should have won with the Saints laying three and a mm. half because the Bears did manage to put up points. And again, Allen Robinson played, which we weren't expecting necessarily. Right. But I think this is a game where the Titans destroy the Bears in Tennessee in a bounce back spot. All right, here's my fear, okay? So the Titans are, they have won games by two, three, one, six, uh, and six. Mm-hmm. They've won one game by 26, they've lost by three, and they've lost by 11. They've lost two games in a row. Their season is sort of hinging here on this game. Right. My fear is this Titans team is crashing down to earth after a red-hot start. Mm-hmm. And that line at five and a half, I'm petrified. I can see them winning this game by three points and just squeaking it out and not yeah. in, in Chicago covering it because this was on my maybe list of Chicago mm-hmm. plus five and a half. Oh, you like Chicago on this side because of the line because okay. of the points. It's now spread. six and a half, by the way, is where I see. So it, I don't think that yeah, I, I helps go, you in any way. No, but yes, I just and that by the way is uh, that's our most split game. On, on bet analyzer it's 50%. i'm just scared i'm just really scared of how close these games are with the titans every week okay and it comes down to a field goal one way or the other and steven guskowski whether the hip is working or not <laughs> oh guskowski yeah and and so i just i'm petrified okay. with these titans games i mean i've just I, i've kind of gotten my toe stubbed a bunch of times with the titans and so i'm a little gun shy with them at the moment okay that's fine who let's go to your next one then guy my last gotta, one is ugly okay and yep. nobody nobody agrees with me but here is my last one. Okay. Tua Tagovailoa is in the middle of a really interesting controversy in Miami right now. Mm-hmm. So it was leaked out to the media that the Dolphins may be showcasing Tua oh. in order to trade him using yeah. the two first-round picks they've got next year, their own and the Texans, and the two second-round picks that they've got next year, their own and the Texans, to move up. And if they're, and they're not in the top five already themselves – even in the top 10 to package those four picks and go up to one or two and take Justin Fields or take Trevor Lawrence. Mm -hmm. The team quickly came out and shot that down. But -hmm. just the fact that that went out there and the fact that Tua played like crap, just like I thought he would. 
Mm -hmm. The offense did nothing with him. It was the defense and the special teams that did all the scoring. The run, that was the third highest negative yardage differential in NFL history with the Rams and the Miami Dolphins last week. It was over 350-yard difference between the Rams and the Dolphins. Sure, Tua threw a touchdown pass. Great. This is a different defense. I get it with the Arizona Cardinals, but this is his first road start. Welcome to the NFL. This is where Tua probably should have started, to be quite honest. Not last week. I think the Cardinals win this game relatively easily. Minus four and a half. I'm taking Arizona. I'm putting it in. Okay. I'm putting it in. Um, It was on my probably list. One of these where if you said it, I was definitely going with it. Uh, I agree with basically everything you said. And I think that this game favors uh, the Cardinals in a couple of other ways, too. I, the... The Dolphins generally are terrible against the run. And I know Kenyon Drake is out. doesn't matter. Chase Edmonds is probably playing a little better. But uh, Murray is going to run like a crazy man. They, they play man defense, too. They've got a man scheme, which is perfect for Murray to run all over it. They also don't have Miles Gaskin or Matt Breida, by the way, in the Dolphins. So they're going to be basically running Jordan Howard out there, which is going to take away any threat of the run game. Tua really didn't look good. And I I felt for you because I know how big you were on the Rams. I <laughs> yeah. didn't let us put it in the contest. But I felt for you because they did not play well. And they got, you know, they got a Jared Goff and then a special teams touchdown. Tua did not look good in that game. So I'm completely on board with this. I'll do Cardinals laying four and a half to Dolphins. In Arizona, so that's good with me. Uh, okay, I've got three more games, Matt, that are on my maybe list. Okay. okay, so let me lay them out here for you, and it's fine if you're on the other side. My guess is you're not going to like this one, but how do you feel about the Saints getting four and a half from the Bucks? I don't hate it. So here is my concern when you're talking about New Orleans on the road. You know, we're assuming Michael Thomas is playing and healthy, right? Yes. Okay. So Michael Thomas is back. That changes a lot. You got Alvin Kamara, who's going to be insane like he always is. He's a major focal point and a difficult guy to stop. The Bucks defense got exposed a little bit last week, but my worry is how much were they looking ahead to the Saints game and they didn't totally focus in like they should have against mm-hmm. the Giants. But I was really surprised at how easily the Giants threw the ball, not really ran the ball, but threw the ball. So going into the game, the Bucks defense was number one against the run DVOA and number three against the pass DVOA. That passing stat clearly was inflated and clearly was wrong. So I don't hate this. And if you want to stand on a table and say New Orleans plus four and a half and you want to go off of it saying it's a numbers play and maybe the Saints win the game outright, I don't hate it because I am a little concerned. I just don't know what what Antonio Brown does and how many snaps he gets. And does him and Brady, are they just like on a different wavelength like they were when he played against the Dolphins for the Patriots that first game where he was like five catches for 80 yards and a touchdown? Right. Right. So I'm a, I'm a little that that's my only concern if like him and Brady come out and just are on fire together and I don't love that Saints defense. I like it, I don't love it, but I don't hate the play four and a half for the Saints. So I'm a little concerned with most of what you mentioned. First of all, Chris Godwin may play right now, but he's basically got a giant like splint cast on right. his finger. So I I don't expect him to be full health. I I don't really trust the running game for Tampa, especially not against the Saints which has a, a pretty solid yep. run defense because they can't get into a groove because if you fumble or you miss a blitz pickup, you are benched like Ronald Jones was. So I feel like they don't really have it there. I don't expect Brown to come in and play a full complement of snaps, but he might. And Drew Brees is kind of, I guess, battling some sort of nagging shoulder thing. But I do think basically this might be the first time that they're going to be at full strength offensively since the first game, really, when Emmanuel Sanders was not in any way involved. And he de- he played really well before going on the COVID list, like really well, especially without Michael Thomas. I think if you give him and you give Michael Thomas and Sanders and Kamara and you've got, I mean, Jared Cook is back and he's doing his thing with the red zone. This just strikes me as a division game that's going to be played really, really close. It doesn't strike me as something where the Bucks are going to be able to completely blow them out of the water in this game. So this feels like a field goal game to me one way or another. I don't think I, I mean, I'm not like, I don't love the Saints on the money line or anything like that, but I do feel like this is going to be within a field goal. So why don't you know, we put that on the on the maybe list? Yeah, I mean, I I'm comfortable. I mean, I wouldn't bet this game. How about that? Mm-hmm. But I, but I am comfortable taking it in the contest because every point you're making is is accurate, and, and I yeah. do think there's a legitimate chance this is a this is the game of the weekend. 
you know, primetime game, monster ratings, everyone's eyeballs are on it, everyone's been looking forward to it, everyone's, you're going to get the A game from both teams. Right. So it coming down to elastic and field goal drive, absolutely. I can see and that. the Bucks are on a short week, don't forget. Like, that too, that yep. makes, They're on a short week, and I think the Saints probably hear all of this, right? They're like, okay, the Bucks, 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 Bucks. Well, the Saints were like the preseason sort of pick to... And it's uh, been their division, too. Right. I mean, yeah. this is this is their division, so there right. is somewhat of like a... Okay, new kids on the block. No, thank you. We're the right. we're still the ones who run this joint. So yeah. now the consensus line is now four, and it's it's very split. Fifty four percent of the people on Bet Analyzer are with the Saints, but it's very split. Which I understand. I understand. I'll just, oh, I I'll think take... the money's going to pour in on the Bucks. Yeah, I think yeah. this is going to be a public side in a I big agree. way on the. Bucks. I agree, and I, I think that's why I'm willing to fade it. You yeah. know, one of the reasons yeah. as well. Uh, okay, I've got two more here. Do you want to go? Do you have anything else to that's talk it. about? It, but... I'm good. Okay, that, those are all so mine. here are two other ones that I lean in favor of. You can let me know if you like either one. <laughs> it's hard to come into a game and be like, you know what? I want to take the Pats laying more than a field goal, <sighs> giving everything that's happening with them. But you know, and this is not a I get to do whatever I want with the Jets. I'm not I'm not making that that pick here because I like it. But the Jets, I I Douglas is, is basically trying to go 0 and 16. And I root against them actively because I want the 0 and 16. They are an absolutely terrible football team. You're not going to get Jamison Crowder back here. He's going to miss this game. Sam Darnold is probably at a point where they would not play him, and he's going to push to play with his injury, whatever it is, I guess his shoulder, whatever it is. He's going to push to play through it. He's limited in practice. He wants to play. Kudos to him because he probably knows that they're (laughs) eyeing Trevor Lawrence. So he wants to go. And Belichick, of all things, of everything that's wrong with the Pats, of everything else, the one thing you can bet, is that Belichick wants to stick it to the Jets as bad as possible. So for me... And they were buyers at the trade deadline. Yeah. Like, I, how in the world did they were I, buyers? They weren't I, sellers. They were buyers. I know. I, I don't know. So for me, I, what, however they want to do it, whether or not it's Damian Harris running, I know the Jets have a decent run defense, or Cam just running it, or, you know, what, uh, whatever you want to do. You want to get Jacoby Myers all the way involved? It doesn't matter to me. I don't think the Jets score to do it. Because, I, I look, I'm not going to bet this, but to take it in the contest, to give me something to root for and watch here, yeah. let's let's do it. Because okay. because he, here's my here's, here's why I like it. In, I mean, I, I wish it was seven, not seven and a half. I, me I really, too. I don't me like too. that hook. Me but, too. And so that's why I wouldn't bet it. But, but you know, in terms of, of looking at it and saying, okay, because this might be my involved in my teaser uh, for, for the week. And, yep. you know, the Patriots are, at, are, are on the road here. But one thing that I am really curious about is if the Jets want to lose and they don't want to win, the Patriots have a lot of pride still. And sometimes that's all you need, really, in these games right. with no fans, that if you're more motivated, if you're more focused, like that's why right now there's this crazy trend for underdogs in prime time because they hear all week, oh, here comes the team that's going to come in and beat you. So out of the gate, like the Giants, out of the gate, there was no juice or fire for the Bucks coming out of the gate in that game. It was all about the Giants. So I don't think the Jets are going to have any of that juice until they fire their head coach. And when they fire Adam Gase, as I've said, the week after they fire Adam Gase, I will bet on the Jets to cover the spread, whatever it is. But that's until good. they do that, the other side is the right play. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel. And so you'll be betting on the Jets in week one of the 2021 NFL season because yeah. they are apparently <laughs> just going to... I mean, what could Adam Gase possibly do at this moment to get fired, like legitimately? So I think they're just going to ride this out and then fire him and then hopefully hire the enemy and that'll be it. Um, oh, so you th- think you guys are getting them, huh? Oh, I have no idea. See, the no Texans, idea. the Texans thinks that, that they're getting him. They may, they may. That was just my hope okay. The Texans the fans all believe that they're getting him because Deshaun Watson worked with them and knows him really well. So it certainly could happen, and okay. uh, it's not as if we are at the moment a particularly desirable place to end up sure. in. So that's certainly possible. Uh, the eighty percent of our experts are taking the Patriots in this game as well at seven and a half as well. So they're they're okay with the with us. So okay, we'll put it in. So that really gives us four Matt Seattle. Getting two and a half from the Bills, the Chiefs. I got five. And a half. What do you mean? That's five. What's five? The list. What was our fifth? Um, Seattle, maybe... Kansas City, Arizona, Saints, Patriots. Oh, uh, we didn't. I didn't put the Saints in. I didn't know that that's what you wanted to go with. That you were good to go with that one. So I'm fine with the Saints if you're fine with the Saints. But if you're not, then we can put it. We can keep it on the maybe uh, in the maybe category. No, I'm I'm good with it. I'm I'm good with the Saints. Then that that's fine. Let's run through the rest of the games sure. though here for for you know our listeners' sake. Uh, the only other game which I kind of liked, which would be really tough to take, 
uh, was the Steelers laying 13 and a half. I thought you were going to go the there. Cowboys. That's funny. I was, I, I really thought you were going to go there. I, yeah. I, there's no other way to play this, but the Steelers, but yikes. Right. So yeah. what, we haven't seen what happens if one of the three quarterbacks, I'm not Danucci, but what happens if the other two quarterbacks come out and play decent? Then that's, what? Uh, that's legitimately why I'd, I hesitate and why it was like the last game on my list, because I don't know if Cooper Rush or Garrett Gilbert is is going to be able to move the ball whatsoever. And, you know, I hate variables. So I mean, they know the system. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 nothing else. They know the system. So it's like, yeah. uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Eighty six percent of experts are, are with the Steelers. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm fine. I'm good. As long as you're good with the Saints. I like the Saints game over that. But, oh, I like yeah. that much better than yeah. laying 13 and a half on the road. That's fine. I'm good to do that as well. I, I do like that side, but I agree that it's a little iffy. All right, let's go through the remaining, I believe, three games. I missed one last week. I'm very sorry, listeners. I think I missed we the, did? the Titans. The oh, Titans we Bengals. did. Whoops. Okay. Uh, it's my bad. It's my bad. Um, okay, let's do the Texans link seven and a half to the Jaguars in Jacksonville. Again, this is a quarterback swap, so it's why I can't like it. I mean, right. I, I initially thought about taking the Jags, and, and I looked at it, and I was like, plus seven and a half. I was like, okay, maybe, but a quarterback swap for me, I just can't. I, I don't know what to expect out of that offense. Yeah. I, that's the thing. They do have COVID concerns, by the way, with Houston. So True. that is a little worrisome as well, but I agree. I don't know at all what we're going to see here. So it's a game where I'm not going anywhere at over a touchdown. It is down to a touchdown line in the consensus lines, and our experts are at 76% favoring Houston, which I get, but it's something where I don't know what uh, yeah. Luton is going to look like. Uh, Broncos getting three and a half from the Falcons in Atlanta. I mean, Drew Locke on the road? No, <laughs> yeah, I just can't trust Drew Locke. I mean, I just he's like, I'm gonna keep on dancing. Yeah, you keep on dancing, you fool. But no, yeah. I'm just not. A, I don't like Drew Locke. I didn't like him in college. I don't like him in the NFL. I, I have a hard time. They, they they got a gift because of the Chargers of the Chargers. No, can't do it. Yeah, people are are they like the Broncos in this yeah. game? I, I've had people talk to me about it. <sighs> I I don't like it. I'm no. certainly not back in the Falcons because I'm never no. back. In the, like I'm, I'm not, not going there, but I'm not. I just I'm not. They look terrible in that game. Like I get that the Chargers were going to charge her, but they look terrible in that game overall. So I'm not going to go there as well. Last game, which I would have let you talk me into this one, by the way, if you liked it, is Washington laying two and a half to the Giants in Washington. Yeah, I'm not betting or taking anything to do with the NFC East. Okay, interdivision now. Like when, when yes. they're playing another division, but inside the division, yep, I don't care. I mean, no, <laughs> like yeah. Cowboys, Washington, you know, New York versus the Eagles. Like, I, it's just you just can't. This is the most pathetic division in football. It's just, yeah. I mean, Washington might win the division. They really might. So yeah. if you said I Washington, think, okay, maybe, but I think they could be fool's gold too. Yeah, uh, I think that. If, I think I'd take the the uh, Washington football team if I had to in this game under Phil because I think they're going to win. And we said it in that first game, even though I think they lost the first game, but but covered, right? Was that the one that the Giants won by one? I think but that's right. Washington was getting yeah. two and a half. Right. I think Washington's going to win this game. I, yeah, Daniel Jones has played better. I mean, he's he's missed plenty of throws. But I still think off a of bye, I, I, I like more what Kyle Allen is doing a little bit. So I I'm do sorry. think that How did I lose games. that bet on Monday? Which, like how Which did one? I, how did Daniel Jones should have thrown two interceptions on that last drive? Yes, not one, but two. Like yes, one, that, okay, fine, but two different times. Yeah, the ball should have been picked. Yeah, like I just, I, I was literally on my couch, just like in a in a fetal position, going like, I can't believe I'm going to lose this bet on Monday night. It's football, man. Oh. That's how that's how we roll. Sixty seven percent of experts, by the way, are with Washington as well. So that's the side I'm on as well. If you do want to bet it, we're not going to put it in the contest. What we are going to put in the contest is. Seattle getting two and a half from the Bills. Chiefs laying ten and a half to the Panthers. The Cardinals laying four and a half to the Dolphins. The Pats, yes, laying seven and a half to the Jets. And the Saints getting four and a half from the Bucks. You good with that? I like it. It's a nice All mix. Right. No I big like lines. It. Some road dogs. I like it. I really like it. It's a good mix. I feel good about this week. Matt, I really do. I feel like this is going to be the week, so we're going to do it. All right, uh, everybody, by the way, make sure you're tuning in to the Daily Juice podcast, which Matt hosts. It's awesome. Gives bets daily for various sports, and especially now coming in with the NFL and with college football and all that. It is a great listen, 15 minutes every morning. Join our Discord channel. Check out our prop 
bet cheat sheet, uh, all of that stuff over at bettingpros.com. We will talk to you next week and I will post our picks, even if we don't change, because I got some feedback on that. Even if we don't change, I will make sure I post our picks when we make the choice on uh, Saturday night. So everybody have a great weekend. Enjoy your football betting and we will talk to you next week.